Welcome back to the Three Jokers right here at Comic Story, where we take a lot of your favorite comic book ideas and concepts and break them down, explaining them or telling you what happened in your favorite comic book. We are your hub for comic book knowledge, and thank you for joining us today. The Three Jokers is a concept that was started up in Dark Side War all the way back in 2016. And as this is issue two, we have now discovered that there are actually three Jokers, the comedian, the clown, and the criminal. As it turns out, the criminal has been making new jokers whenever he comes across somebody worthy of it, so that there are three jokers, which is what DC is using as an excuse for why the Joker is one of the few villains to be completely different as the years have gone on. In our last issue, they finally revealed themselves to the Bat family as being three separate jokers, and Red Hood shot one of them in the head. And that is where we are today. Now. Let's get into the actual storyline and stick around to the ending as I give you my opinion and thoughts on this overall plot in general and also explain what's happening with issue three. The garnished purple truck pulls up in front of a standard home in an unknowing suburban neighborhood. The comedian steps out walking up to the front door. Honey, I'm home! The Joker announces as he walks through the door of the bright and cheery home. His wife puts food on the table, fear in her face. The Joker kisses her on the cheek sitting down for dinner, and the woman goes to the stairs calling for their son to come down to dinner. But that boy, he's scared. It's fear on his face. They all eventually sit down and the Joker looks around trying to lighten the mood. What are you doing? The criminal Joker asks, looking as the comedian sits down at a moldy table across from a stuffed bear and a mannequin. You're wasting time coming back here, the criminal tells him. As he walks across the room, ignoring the comedian's commands to not touch the mannequin. He points out that it was the comedian's idea to leave Batman a trail to follow. That it would make it more fun. And now one of us is dead! He snarls as he throws the mannequin to the floor. Meanwhile, over at the warehouse, the clown lays on the floor and a pool of his own blood flies buzzing around him. And elsewhere in the city, James Gordon and Harvey Bullock stand outside of a house in the rain. They wait for Batman to control the smiling dogs that bark at them through the window. Eventually, they're inside standing over the body of the retired Judge Walls. The man was murdered by his own Joker-infected dogs, but not before he was pumped full of toxins himself. The police don't understand the attack, but Batman explains that it was Judge Walls who began sending criminals to Arkham when the security was loose. Judge Walls was responsible for Arkham's revolving door, Batman tells him. The conversation is interrupted as Batgirl tells the team that she needs to speak with Batman privately. Did the Joker escape? Asks Gordon. No, she tells them looking at Batman, and Batman realizes what's going on. Where's Red Hood? Minutes later, Batman and Batgirl are roaring down the streets of Gotham, Barbara finishing filling Batman in on what happened, asking him what they should do next. Batman is quiet, but Batgirl won't let go, reminding him that Jason killed the Joker. He killed a Joker, Barbara. That's all we know. He tells her as the Batmobile skids around a corner, but she doesn't let up, pressing him on the issue, asking what does it matter if he killed a Joker or anyone else? And Batman finally tells her that there's nothing that they can do about it. If we arrest him for murder, he would be forced to be unmasked. And as the only eyewitness, so would you. He tells her. Batgirl is angry, demanding to know why Bruce isn't as upset as her. They stop and Bruce rolls down his window as he sees Barbara, explaining that Jason is suffering, that the Joker hurt him, and Jason healed wrong. He got more violent, and you got stronger, Batman tells her. All I wanted to do was help Jason, but... I thought he was dead, and I'll never forgive myself for leaving him in that grave. Ever! Barbara questions why Batman didn't help him when he found out that he was alive. Because I was hoping he was more like you, Batman tells her. Screams of pain echo through the alleyway as the Red Hood throws another of Joker's goons against the ice cream truck. The bodies of the unconscious litter the ground as the final goon asks what Hood wants. What do you want? You didn't even ask us! He shouts. I don't like asking twice, Red Hood snarls. He demands to know where the goons were taking the chemicals that the Joker had hidden. The man refuses, but Red Hood's helmet is already picking up traces of the pool cleaner on the man's skin. Beneath the helmet, Jason's eyes narrow. He can't have the thug running before the police get to him. Screams echo throughout the night as Batman and Batgirl continue down their road. Barbara realizes that they are leaving the city, asking if Bruce is tracking Jason but Bruce tells her that they're headed to Blackgate Prison. Batman tells her that before the police arrived, he discovered that Judge Walls had been bludgeoned with his humanitarian award before the dogs got to him. 
And why didn't you tell my father that? Batgirl asks. But there's a pause as Batman tells her that he found fingerprints on the award. Barbara watches as Batman heads towards the prison entrance, questioning whose prints he found. And Batman tells her that they were Joe Chills. He moves through the shadowy halls, passing the cells of enemies from the past, standing outside of the cell of Joe Chill, and he tries to quiet the little boy inside of him, the one that lost his parents. His voice catches for a moment. You know who I am, he finally growls. We need to talk, now! He snaps, but nothing stirs from the shadows. Batman rears back, kicking the door down, but discovers that the cell is empty. They moved him, Barbara tells him from the doorway. So a short time later, they are staring down at the infirmed body of Joe Chill in Blackgate's hospital wing. Batgirl explains that he has stage 4 cancer and the man only has a short time to live. Batman knows that someone must have visited Chill, gotten his fingerprints in order to lead them there. What connection does Joker have with Joe Chill other than you? Barbara asks him, but Batman doesn't know. He turns away, informing her that Jason is now accessing the Bat computer. I think Jason found the other two. He tells her. Rain is beating down from the sky as Jason leaves his bike and enters the Condemned Athletic Association. He pulls out a crowbar from his back, destroying the chain and entering the darkened halls. He pulls free his pistol, entering the pool area, stopping with shock. Man, what are you doing here? He whispers at the horrific scene. The pool is choked with the bodies as they bob in chemicals that have been dumped there. He leans down, taking a sample but the cotton swab he uses begins to sizzle. I can't believe I beat Batman here. He laughs to himself, removing his helmet, trying to get Batgirl on the comms, and a hand reaches out from the pool, grasping at his boot. Help me! The man gasps, a grin pulling to the size of his mouth. Jason kicks him away, pulling out his pistol. He aims at the creature, but the man doesn't come back out of the water. I had hoped you would come! A voice calls out, with hands grabbing Jason from behind, pulling him away, as laughter echoes throughout the abandoned building. <laughs> yes! He'll be perfect! The Joker whispers as he picks up the Red Hood's helmet. Jason awakens a short time later, blood dripping from his face as he sits naked in a chair. The criminal stands nearby, talking about how Jason was a petty criminal that was reborn as Robin. And then after your death... You are reborn. Again! Leaning in, the Joker admits that these things always happen in threes. He tells Jason that he was the first, running Gotham before the arrival of Batman. Anger wells up in Jason and he begins to yell, telling the criminal that he left one of the other Jokers with a hole in his head. And as soon as I get free, you're next! He screams out. Jason then stunned as the criminal begins to laugh. And that laughter seems to bring pain as tears stream down his face. Jason continues to glare as the criminal's laughter stops. So what? Are you going to tell me that you're the real Joker? He asks, but suddenly the Red Hood's helmet slips over his head, and a bright smile is painted on it as a new voice tells Jason that he is going to find out. The criminal paces before him, questioning why Jason would put on a helmet and call himself the Red Hood after what the Joker did to him. It's a joke. Jason tells him menacingly, but the criminal shakes his head, reminding Jason that they left him with brain damage, nerve pain, physical, and emotional trauma so bad that he makes himself hurt other people. We're more alike than you'd like to admit, the criminal tells him, leaning in, reminding Jason that he nearly died, and he blames Batman for it. He hates him for it. I hate a lot of people, Jason hisses, and finally the criminal leans back, staring at him. Batman needs a better Joker. To put it simply, you're just not bright enough, Joker tells him. And the crowbar smashes him in the helmet hard enough to crack the fiberglass. Laughter echoing throughout the room as the crowbar is brought down again and again. The comedian keeps laughing as he continues to hit Jason. You know, this is more fun than the first time! <laughs> you better make sure I stay dead this time! Jason gasps on the floor, but the Joker laughs, telling him, I was rooting for you to raise up again! <laughs> and he brings the crowbar down one last time. Barbara kicks in the door to the pool, calling out for Red Hood. We could have entered quietly, Batman says as he moves forward. 
They move through the building, laughter echoing throughout the halls around them, and they stop as the sound seems to be all around them. Suddenly, all the people that the Joker infected begin to surround them. They attack, laughter still escaping from their lips as they whisper for help. Batman and Batgirl fight back, knocking some of them away. But there are too many and they begin to swarm. One of them rips off the bat belt and a button begins to flash. They activated the call button! It's coming! Batman yells as he reaches for Barbara's hand, pulling her free of the crowd. They leap clear as the Batmobile comes careening through a wall, driving through the horde of victims. Batman looks up, seeing the fallen all around them. We can still save some of them. We can still save Jason, Batman whispers to Batgirl, and they keep moving through the abandoned building, finally finding the pool that had recently been filled with chemicals. Why are they doing this? Batgirl questions. I don't know, Batman whispers as they find a crowbar on the floor with a blood trail leading to another room, and pushing open that door, they find Jason on the floor. Batman reaches for him, but Jason springs back to life, pulling away, yelling for them not to touch him. He begins to babble as he reaches for his helmet, babbling about the three Jokers. Jason, are you alright? Am I alright? What do you think, Bruce? He blames Bruce for putting him on this path, leaving him to die, replacing him so quickly. And Barbara reaches out for him, hesitating for a moment before she puts a hand on his back. What do you want? He whispers, and she pulls him in close as he crumples to the floor. Right now, I just want to get you somewhere safe. Batman mentions that Jason is now safe, so he needs to make sure that the rest of Gotham is while Barbara takes care of Jason. So a short time later, Jason wakes up confused about where he is, and looking around the room, he finds Barbara's wheelchair, calendars of her therapy sessions, books about pain management, and later she slips back through the shadows, finding her bed empty and one of the books left out. Jason comes out of the bathroom, apologizing for using her shower and going through her closet. That book looked useful he admits to her and they look at each other for a moment before she asks if he's okay i don't think i've ever been okay he admits to her admitting that the joker was right about him being on a path just like the joker i don't want to be like that he tells her and he asks about the wheelchair and the calendar asking her if it brings up old pain and memories and she tells him that it reminds her of how the people around her are here to help her heal she knows that no one was there for jason telling him that it was because they thought he was dead we all wish we had been there for you, she tells him. No one has ever said that to me. He whispers back to her, and with that, they lean in to kiss. We shouldn't have done that, Barbara whispers as she quickly pulls away, but she tells Jason that she wanted him to know that she cares. But the moment is past, and she reminds him that they need to get back on the case. Meanwhile, back in the Batcave, Batman looks through the case files of the three Jokers, and he turns, looking at his globe and seeing Alaska. Fire and smoke bellow from below the Black Gate prison, and a purple truck careens through the city as the Joker cracks a smile. Jojo looks up in fear, not sure what they want with him, but the Joker holds up a camera, filming the man's startled expression. It's time to finally confess, Mr. Chill. Why did you really kill Martha and Thomas Wayne? The Joker asks with a smile. And with that, we conclude the second issue of The Three Jokers. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you stick around, I was going to tell you my opinions on this whole matter. First off, these issues are super long, which is why we did do a single issue for this, even though I said that we're going to stop doing most single issues. When I said that, I did state that there would be some caveats to that rule. We would still do some that are super long, such as this. But overall, I want to know what your guys' opinion on the three Jokers is, because it's not what I was expecting. I did an entire review on this issue beforehand, like a week and a half ago, and I pretty much told my opinions there, but overall, I don't... This is not what I was expecting the three Jokers to be. It feels like a mess. It doesn't seem like it fits into much of the continuity. It it feels mostly like a Jason Todd storyline, which is what I do like about it, but I was expecting more of a Joker storyline, which I don't feel like we're getting. Maybe the last issue is going to pull it all together and make it very Joker-centric, but right now I feel like the Joker is just a secondary character to a Batman and Red Hood storyline, which I'm not against as a Red Hood fan, but I just, I was expecting more. But what do you guys think in the comments down below? Let me know what you think. And don't forget, you can find me over at twitch.tv slash comicstorian and twitch.tv slash comicstoriangaming for various comic book podcasting and various video games. I appreciate all your guys' support. You're all incredible. And I will see you next time right here at the Comic Storian channel.